In studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Good morning, Rob. And Maria Lawrenson as well, bringer of the goods today. A gigantic box times two of snacks from Hospice of the Panhandle. Good morning. Maria, one thing is universally true in life. If you bring food to the room, you become a popular person. This <laughs> I, has never I've changed. I've heard that. I've heard <laughs> that before. So You know, but some of us have to bribe for this popularity, but not <laughs> Maria. She's <laughs> popular regardless. I don't know about that, but... Thanks. Thanks, Admiral. <laughs> well, she for your affirmation. She she has to be popular and uh, she also has to have a lot of energy because in uh, what about uh, 5 months she's got to stand in front of everybody and auction off a bunch of stuff for the big hospice yeah, gala. Yeah. That's right. Over are you doing the Bavarian again this year? We are. We are in May the 17th. Um and we moved that date around three or four times, uh, but it's set now, and um, we kind of prefer early June, but it just didn't work out. Um, so May 17th. Yeah, May 17th, Friday, May 17th. If anyone's interested, they should get in touch with us. Um, people often ask, how come I didn't hear about it? Um, you know, both of you obviously were there last year. It pretty much sells out with sponsorships, and... You know, we have this cadre of people who have supported hospice for a long time in a big way. And so we don't really publicize general ticket sales. Mm -hmm. But if people are interested, they should get in touch with us and, and we'll do that. It, it's a lot of fun it and is. for a very good cause. Thank you. It, it's, a, it's a who's who of people there. <laughs> I only got in because they needed help cleaning up afterward. Yes, <laughs> but, stop. But otherwise, important people are there. Yeah, and you were too busy talking to do much cleaning up too, Rob. Well, I, there's a technique to getting out of work, and I've perfected it over 60 years, Bill. Yeah, but, well, but you insisted your wife do her share of cleaning up while you were standing there visiting and talking. Oh, she, she, this, loves, she loves to clean. All nice of Valentine's this gift. is completely untrue. We have an incredible group of volunteers who helps us with that event and they do a lot of it as does david awesome at the yeah. bavarian his yeah. team is just top notch maria sure. we know it was untrue the audience knows it's untrue but it's fun to pick on rob and it you, is when indeed. you give us an opportunity we like to take advantage of it i got it a giant indeed. box of snacks i'm happy to bring it so as much <laughs> there you go brian wood is our next guest he's a candidate for secretary of state as well brian good morning sir good morning how are you sir we are well. Where are we reading, where are reaching you this morning? Uh, out of Putnam County, Wingfield, West Virginia. Very nice. Hey, did you get any snow from this uh, nor'easter that came up yesterday? Just a tad bit, not much at all. Um, happy Valentine's Day, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you kindly. Uh, we were just alluding to the fact that Maria from Hospice, they used to send out cookies to all their people, but now they send out giant boxes of snacks just <laughs> yeah. in time for Ash Wednesday when I can't eat any of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. But, uh, Very good. Hey, uh, let's talk uh, about the Secretary of State's office, Brian, and why you would like to be the next Secretary of State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, for far too long, I feel like the Secretary of State's office has been used as a stepping stone for higher offices. And at some point in time, uh, during the terms, you know, they take their eye off the ball as to doing the work within the office. I'm the county clerk for Putnam County, and I'm currently serving my fourth term. And so county clerks rely on the Secretary of State's office to provide us with information, to provide us with a, a, a good, clean um, statewide voter registration system that we can work from and different things like that. So they really affect the downhill slide of the work. And I, I, I want to give the people of West Virginia the opportunity to vote for somebody who has the experience, who, who know, you know, 20, 19 years worth of election experience, 26 years worth of public office management to, you know, step up to the next level and do that work for them. I, I'm the only candidate that has this type of experience in the, in the race. I'm not a statewide politician I'm, I'm not your your typical statewide politician don't have deep pockets and i don't come from uh, a political family but uh, i feel the citizens of west virginia uh, are owed the opportunity to vote for somebody that's just like them puts their pants on one leg at a time and knows the job and cares about the job i've already uh, committed to not running for anything higher you know so i'm not gonna be running for governor or congress or anything like that i just you know 
as this was rolling out and started seeing the different people uh, fall in line as to who was running, I felt that uh, somebody needed to step up that knew about that office and could hit the ground running from day one. So uh, I took taking a chance and uh, giving the people an opportunity to vote for somebody that, that truly wants it for the right reasons. Brian, why would you commit to not running for higher office at this stage? Uh, well, you know, Lord has passed for all of us, and, and, and my past has been uh, serving the people of Putnam County. I served as two terms as magistrate. Uh, I'm in my fourth term as county clerk. And, and, you know, on the public service on the county level, you don't you don't get ahead in life, but you, you get to feed your family, and, and, and you're blessed to serve the people. Uh, I've got a, a servant's heart. Uh, and I, I just, I feel my, it, this office is in my wheelhouse. You know, I could have ran for a different state office or, or stayed right here as, as county clerk in Putnam County, which I'm blessed to do. And, and we will not take our eye off the ball here in Putnam County, even if it means, uh, hindering my chances of winning the state race. Uh, but I, I just feel this is, this is in my wheelhouse. I know that I know the equipment. I know the vendors. I know the team that's in place now. I know the history of the office of where we're where we're at and where we've got to go. Um, I know, you know, how to put the pieces of the puzzle back together again. Should we lose any team members? Um, I, 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 there's going to be no other candidate in this race that has that 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 background and that that opportunity. Uh, when it comes to the other portions of the office, you know, on the business side and things like that, I think it's a, you know, a lot of that's just listening to the business owners, um, and applying, uh, applying, uh, common sense to it. You, you, you're, you're just the red tape. You just need, we just need to make it productive and get out of their way so that they can prosper. Um, and it's not, and it's not that difficult to, to manage that portion of the office. I don't believe they got some very good employees there. You, you know, you need to have a next man uh, up mentality, so that way, uh, should Susie you know retire, um, Johnny can step in and uh, answer those questions for the citizens. But you know, right now, uh, people know the Secretary of State's office as being the chief election officer, officer for the state of West Virginia, and there's nobody in this race that has the background that I do when it comes to elections. Bill. Yeah. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, Brian. Uh, you, there's a little question that you're well qualified on the election side uh, with your uh, your 18 years as a as a clerk and 26 years involved in elections and the like. Uh, unquestionably, you have a lot of experience there. Uh, one of your opponents uh, points out, and that would be Ken Reed, uh, that two thirds of the activities of the secretary of state's office deals with business especially small business and he makes the argument that he has where you've had a lot of experience on the election side he's had a lot of business on the small business side how do you how do you counter an argument such as that you did partly just a second ago but go ahead and elaborate on that point yes sir uh, you know no, none of us can go into it as acting as if we know everything about uh, any portion of the office. In other words, we've got to keep our ears open and listen to the citizens, listen to the business owners and so forth. If you're a business owner and you go in there looking and acting as if you know everything about it and you're not listening, then you're not helping those citizens that are having problems. I, I've, I, like I say, I've administered the, the office here for 19 years as county clerk. We have different divisions within this office. Uh, you know, payroll, bookkeeping, uh, the record room, uh, we're the clerk of the, uh, the county commission, we're clerk of the civil service board, we, uh, and then obviously the election side of things. So there's, we wear multiple hats as county clerks uh, throughout the state. And, um, and so I, I, I just believe that it's going to be a lot easier for me to learn the business side, which, you know, I think, uh, um, they're making more out of the business side than they are the, the election side only because they don't have any experience in the, on the election side. But, uh, when it comes to learning that portion of the office or, um, or, uh, which, and, and really what you're doing is you're managing the people, you're managing a team, you're making sure that you're moving the office forward in the right direction. Uh, sometimes there, a lot of times the state, uh, state officials believe they got to come up with a certain program or do this or do that just to get n name recognition because they want to move on up to the next level. I kind of believe that 
we need to do what we do, what we're supposed to be doing, and we do it right. We dot our I's and cross our T's, and we concentrate on that and forget about the uh, the, the circus and the parades and the, and the, and the, and the act uh, in the public's eye just to get name recognition for the next step to the higher level. You know, uh, I, I, don't, I don't have any ambitions in moving on up past this. I want to give the people of West Virginia an opportunity to vote for somebody that, that wants to do this job for this job. And, and so, therefore, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to be out there on the parade route um, coming up with uh, um, services that we waste taxpayers' dollars just to promote my name, my last name. So what prompted you, Brian, your intense desire then to either improve or um, or do this on a statewide level? And I mean, because that's a pretty arduous task to go from Putnam County then to to do a statewide office and have to travel to ostensibly all 55 counties. Um, What was your uh, what was your mindset behind that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I feel that the people um, deserve the right to vote for somebody like them. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with having money. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for the people to do, and there's nothing wrong with having a, uh, a popular last name in politics. I come from neither. Uh, I worked my worked my, my dad died when I was 19. I've worked my way up through life and uh, serving the people of Putnam County, and. Uh, it is it is a big test. Uh, I realize it, and and, uh, and I I feel like I'm going to be fighting this fight with one hand tied behind my back because I do have my responsibilities here in Putnam County as well. But I also feel like the uh, the state of West Virginia and the voters deserve the opportunity to vote for somebody that's not in it for politics. You know, uh, Mr. Reed has ran for four offices in less than ten years. He's ran for Congress already. He's He's ran for commission. He didn't serve the full term for commission, and before he ran for House of Delegates, and then he was beat that House of Delegates. You got Mr. Scaff, who uh, was uh, a delegate, and and then tried some other things, and then come back and switch his party and so forth. I had committed a long time while the others were still thinking that they're going to run or not run, and switching their parties and doing this and that. Uh, that just tells me right there that they're not in it for the right reasons. And I wanted to give the people of West Virginia opportunity to vote for somebody that's in it for the right reasons. Uh, I'm not trying to be personal or be mean towards these other candidates. It's just um, I, I just feel you know, in my heart, uh, I feel like uh, that they deserve the opportunity to vote for somebody. I know it's going to be hard. I know I'm not the typical statewide candidate but i hope that's what makes it appealing to 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 most please you know to your listeners please don't let these other candidates either win it because of their last name or buy it because of their self money um look at the resumes and and you know look at our our you know what we have to offer and make that decision based upon on that knowledge our guest, by the way, Brian Wood. He is candidate for Secretary of State out of Putnam County. Brian asked this question uh, earlier this morning from Doug Scaff, and that was in regards to removing voters' names from the voter rolls, uh, what would your standard be for that? And this is a recurring question in our comment section as well on our Facebook live feed. That is, uh, how many votes in a row would you have to miss? How many elections in a row would you have to skip before your name would automatically be removed from the voter rolls, if any? Well, and so as far as that goes, there is a bill in the, in the legislature right now to to reduce that amount of time on the front end. Uh, it used to be that you had to, or well, it still is, but if this bill passes, uh, on the front end, uh, it would be four years before you make contact with that voter uh, and start the conversation. Hey, are you still here? Have you moved? What's the situation? Um I don't think that this bill is harmful to the voters. It just basically uh, it basically starts that conversation between the county clerk and that voter a little earlier. On the back end of things, once you make that contact with the voter, um, and that's sending them a, a, a postcard saying uh, they can reply back with that postcard saying, uh, I have moved, please remove me from the rolls, or I have I'm still here, and I want to still be a part of the process. Keep me on the rolls. Uh, I have. I'm still here. I want to be a part of the process, but my address is different than what 
uh, what you have currently, and we'll update that information. So I think all this is good in nature for the voter because we, and it's good for the process because we'll have the most up to date information for the voters. We'll still have clean voter rolls, but we have not lost that communication between the county clerks and the voters prior to, um, uh, removing them from the rolls and and nobody's automatically re- removed from the rolls it's important to remember that you know once you send them that postcard out if you do not receive any um any response back then what happens is is that we put them in an act, in active status and with that in active, active status they can still vote and they still have up to two uh g- general federal elections to to vote uh, being on that inactive status. If they vote, they automatically go back onto the active roles rather than the inactive roles. So basically, uh, basically just by going and if you go to the DMV and you update your, your driver's license and you change your address and you say, Hey, I want to update my voter roles as well. That takes you from the inactive status to the active status. Any, any contact with the clerk or the election process takes you from an inactive status to an active status. So uh, it's, it's a, a long process to, to be removed from the rolls. So I think what we have currently works. I think by reducing it on the front end, uh, by two years, we'll speed up the process and that conversation back and forth just so we can keep that information up to date as, as much as possible. So but, I think it's a good thing. Bill? Yeah, I, uh, I, I see where you're going, and I think that uh, that's very applicable for the 20th century. But we're in the 21st century. I did not hear you mention technology at all. Uh, there are a lot of ways that we can purge using technology. If we ask the county clerks to call everybody or to send out an envelope to everybody on somewhat a regular basis, you're talking, well, you should know you're the county clerk. But uh, from my sense, it would be very expensive, uh, very time-consuming, and probably not the most productive way to do it. I, I'm a believer in technology, but yet you did not mention technology one time. Yes, I would, I would agree with you, sir. The, the problem is, is this is federal law, not state law, that requires it, uh, these cards, postcards to be mailed out. So we, you know, it's one of those unfunded mandates on the state level coming from Washington that requires us to do this. Uh, I agree with you. We should take advantage of technology. Uh, we do take advantage of technology in the sense of creating the uh, the list that to contact to make contact with. So on that, that is an effort to try to scrub the roles so we're not sending out as many uh, voter red, or not voter registration cards, but NCO cards is what we call it, national change of address cards or inactive cards. Um, so, so I agree with you. Tech, we do need to take advantage of technology when we can. Uh, as long as it's in a safe manner and it doesn't uh, risk the uh, safety and security of our election. Well, thank you very much for correcting me on the the federal component. I did not realize there was a federal requirement to do that. Uh, I, I still stand by my guns that we need to incorporate technology when we can, but you've also acknowledged that as well. So thank you. And, and, and you know, I, I'm not a, a fan of Washington coming in and t- taking over our local elections i think local i think elections need to be handled on a state level as far as the, the you know the laws and the rules go we we know best as to what uh what our needs are um, and where our problems are at and so i'm not in favor of a washington take over one size fits all uh type of of um legislation that tries to fix a problem in in you know california when we're in West Virginia. And you made reference to the fact, uh, Brian, that you were going to stay in office, um, in your current office, and run for statewide office at the same time. Obviously, that presents some challenges. We have others who, um, uh, on on several fronts, have decided that's not the way to proceed. Um, do you consider that a, a particular challenge? How do you want to, how do you foresee overcoming that? Uh, it is a challenge from a campaigning standpoint, uh, as far as, 
it, it'll be business as usual as far as um, Putnam County goes. Um, I, I'm not in a position to, to, you know, I'm not a rich man. I, like I say, I put my pants on just like the most West Virginians, and and I, you know, I've served the people for Putnam County, and I'm blessed to feed my family by, by doing it. But I've not gotten ahead in life by doing it either. So you know, when it comes to uh, when the electric bill goes up and the gas prices go up, I fill it in my family budget just like most West Virginians do. So I, it, I'm not in the, the the luxury spot to where I can just say, hey, uh, I'm giving up my office to, to give the people an opportunity to vote for somebody that truly cares about this position and, and wants to do a good job for the, for the state. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to shy away from who I am. I, I love, you know, I love who I am. I'm, my, I, I'm proud of my character. I'm proud of my last name, and I'm proud of, you know, the service I've given to the people of Putnam County. I encourage anybody throughout the state, you know, go to Wood, the number four WV dot com, the Wood number four WV dot com. Learn a little more about me. Call somebody in Putnam County and ask. Ask them about me. Just randomly, anyone in Putnam County, I, I'm confident that the, the majority of the, of the people in Putnam County will give me the thumbs up as as a, as a reference because of the work I've done here for them uh, on the election level and on the clerk level with the multiple divisions, whether it be payroll, bookkeeping, uh, uh, whether it be the record room or, or whatnot. Um, I, uh, I I'm you know one of the only candidates that have references like that that you know been, been voted in time in and time out you know had had to answer to the public uh for doing a job that's similar to the secretary of state i cannot think of any other job uh in the, in the state you know any other job that mirrors the secretary of state more than a county clerk's job about a minute, about a minute left bill okay. make it a quick one yeah it will be quick your position on early voting and absentee ballot got about a minute brian Early early voting, I'm definitely in favor of. We're in a sweet spot with the, the 10 days. Any longer, the people don't want to come early because they still want, are learning about the candidates. Any shorter, uh, we don't give them the opportunity to get there. So we're in the sweet spot there. Absentee ballots, I, I think I want everybody to have the opportunity to vote as long as it's safe and secure. I'm not in favor of drop boxes. I'm not in favor of no excuse absentee ballots, uh, only because the uh, perception and uh, you, you know, the the risk involved uh, with not seeing that voter in person voting. So, but at the same time, if it's my mother and she can't get out to vote, I want her to have the opportunity to vote. So uh, I, I think we're in the sweet spot there as far as uh, I'm proud of West Virginia laws and West Virginia elections when it comes to uh, to the way we handle our matters here in West Virginia. Brian, thanks so much for your time this morning. And again, how can people find out more about your campaign for secretary of state? They can go to Wood, the number four, WV.com, and, uh, and I'm Brian Wood, County Clerk, Putnam County, and I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you, Brian. Always appreciate take, uh, talking with you, buddy.